I'm going to give you two examples here this afternoon of uh, federations. One is in common, which we've been talking about. In common was designed from the ground up to be privacy based, to be able to get into um, libraries without providing any more information in order to check out a book or to access a database uh, than historically one has, has with libraries. The UT Identity Management Federation, we approached this from just a different standpoint from the beginning. Um, we were trying to do business between and among our institutions. And consequently, we had little different rules that we wanted to be able to enforce. It does not in any sense um, overshadow or mean we can't use in common. We can. The goal here was to always be compatible. It's just that our thrust was somewhat different. If you look at in common, and I have done some dreadful uh, partisanship here, but on the left hand side of this slide, you can see the University of Texas, and then it lists several UT institutions. There are actually 15 components of the University of Texas that are members of in common. However, um, and if you look at this slide that I distributed earlier, it had a few, um, nope, this is still the same one. Hmm. Sorry about that. Um, on the right hand side, what you have of the 183 participating institutions, this is just the start of the list, starting with Arizona State and running through Gustavus Adolphus. There are uh, obviously many others. And the University of California system is there as just on and on. And more get joined every week, if not every day. Uh, it has really developed, it has taken off, it is really developing a, a lot of use within the community. Other entities that are in in common are the Nash, seven national labs. You may see some up here that are of interest to you. NIH and NSF being the ones that research institutions want to deal with. TerraGrid for high-speed computing. There are 66 sponsored partners and realize that on these three slides for in common, I have simply put up examples. I haven't really put up everything. Um, one of the ones that is kind of interesting here for you all is the MCNC, which is a collection of uh, <clears throat> K-12 institutions in North Carolina. And uh, I don't know as much about that probably as Paul does, if, so he may be a better one uh, to ask about that. But it just points out that higher ed in many cases in support of uh, K through 12 is, is providing this kind of access. It's not entirely clear that it is in, uh, you know, how much it is in in common's mission to do that because uh, they kind of have, the executive committee kind of, uh, service kind of has its hands full doing certain things. Um, so it may be that local uh, universities within a region or within a state are the appropriate things to do business or to put in federations that also um, reach K through 12 simply because they're closer and have the direct relationships with the people in order to make it happen. Uh, notice also the National Student Clearinghouse is on here, which is uh, one of the ones that's also particularly interesting to uh, people within higher ed and making students available. Now I'll come back to the University of Texas Federation. It has been operational since September of 2006. 
I believe that there are 17 entities listed on this slide. Uh, everything from the 15 institutions that are part of the University of Texas plus two that are not degree granting. One is UT System Administration, which is sort of our, our global or corporate holding company that oversees all of the other institutions. And the other is UTEMCO, which um, is the investment management company that oversees the endowment. The kinds of applications, I said yet, uh, earlier that um, we had an interest in uh, being able to do business among the institutions. The third bullet under um, these applications being at the system administration offices is guest wireless for all two U UT institution. That was our first application. And it's a, it's a great application for doing this. Um, we, uh, what it meant was at UT system offices, the uh, vice presidents come in, the chief business officers come in, the academic officers come in to meetings. Um, and so the CIOs come into meetings there. And by having guest wireless, having wireless set up and actually <laughs> Uh, providing higher bandwidth for those that used shibbed wireless than those that used our standard guest account. Uh, we managed to get all of them, uh, all of the institutions up and running pretty quickly. And we had, once we did, um, we saw a number of other reports and other things interesting to do. It lists financial reports there. The institutions all have to, was another first uh, application that we did simply because the monthly financial report um, is something that all 15 institutions had to do every month, but it only involved one person, but the entire infrastructure had to work. So it was easy for us to, to debug. And what I mean by it was easy was we didn't have hundreds or thousands of people trying to use the system and are trying to make it work um, at the same time. So that was useful for us. As soon as it came up, and like I say, we have about 50 applications that are currently uh, running there. We have, um, we brought up Blackboard. The Blackboard that I logged on to earlier was brought up for MD Anderson, which is across the street from the Houston Health Science Center. We have time and effort reporting that all of our institutions have to do for NSF and NIH. And instead of implementing that 15 times, we're implementing it once at MD Anderson and uh, the general, eight of the general academics are already up on it. Uh, MD Anderson and uh, the medical branch Galveston are as well. And so that's 10 and we're bringing up the other four medicals uh, as we speak. Uh, and so another thing is CAIUSE, which is a, a application that allows researchers to apply to for federal grants. It's, sort of was to solve the problem that when uh, the federal government started theirs, they didn't um, actually think anybody out there as a faculty member had a Mac. And so they only wanted to permit PCs to come in. And naturally industry came along and solved the problem. Um, that's Cayuse. Mobile campus. Mobile campus is the most uh, stomach turning application we have. It's one of these things where these guys come in and sell student government on the campus. The idea that sending um, uh, electronic coupons to mobile phones is a good idea. And so you know, kids could be walking down the street and they get a coupon on their phone that says there's 50% off at the pizza place down the street and they go down there and get it. In re return, what the university gets is the ability to text all those students once or two, I think five times a year. 
but it's sold as a money maker for student government. Other applications in the cancer world, um, Health Science Center Houston is doing some work, and now you see we're leaving the UT consortium and getting into Duke and Irvine institutions outside of the UT system, but in fact are in, in common. Others that we're looking at and working on are Fort Dearborn Life, WebMD, PayFlex. These are for the UT institutions. We've ended up collaborating with Texas A&M for a tool called Isaac, which is to do security and vulnerability profiles for departments that people can keep on file year after year. And then finally, the Digital Library, which is a joint effort of Texas A&M, UT Austin. Uh, it's being used by Rice, Texas Tech. It's, it's basically, you can think of it as a repository. Future applications, student information system is a shared service. We're already running it out of a single data center. Uh, HR finance is a shared service. Uh, these are both PeopleSoft applications, and we believe they can be... Uh, be shipped, and the UT Austin uh, Texas Advanced Computer Center. That's that's a uh, supercomputer system. So the University of Texas Federation uses Internet 2 technology. It's based on standards and best practices, such as the LDAP, which is a standard, SAML, which is a standard, EduPerson, which was developed by EduCause and is certainly a best practice. As I've said before, it's scalable, secure, interoperable. The enabling policies exist, and if I um, bring this up, this is a little stale in some ways, and if I were had all the time in the world, I'd rewrite it. Oh, come on. You go down to the bottom of this page. Here are the UT documents. These documents are all there for your stealing if you want to create your own federation. And these are our core documents. You can go on to this website, utsystem.edu, and pull up all of these uh, documents and feel free to uh, use them as though you, they were your own. And don't forget that there's also in common policies and documents, and you're free to use those, as, those too if you're developing your own federation. If you just want to join in Commons Federation or somebody else's federation, you don't need to de develop the documents. You just live by their, their rules. As, and that makes sense to live by, within a federation's rules because we're talking about interoperability and collaboration, so we've all got to find a set of uh, rules we could live under that we can agree to.